In our last episode, we worked with Glory to clear Malden Center so that H-222 could escape the Commonwealth. The Institute destroyed the Ticonderoga safe house, but at least we saved H-2. Heading back to the railroad headquarters, Dr. Carrington pulls us aside. The H-222 situation appears to have been resolved satisfactorily, but there's yet more to be done. Since the fall of the switchboard, we've ascertained the fate of all but two safe houses. I want you to check on Augusta. The safe houses are in trouble too? I thought only the switchboard was attacked. Ah, the Institute didn't content itself with just destroying our headquarters. No. They launched simultaneous strikes on all we hold dear. Herkimer and Allen's safe houses are both confirmed kills. Many fear Augusta will be added to that list. How bad did the Institute hurt us, Doc? Frankly, we're lucky there's a railroad left at all. I don't remember a time our numbers have been so few. But the mission carries on. You're not my boss. Until we know the butcher's bill from the Institute's assault, all agents report to me. Including you. Tell me about Augusta. I'll get it done. Details await at the dead drop. Have a care. Odds are very good you're walking into something nasty. With that, we begin the quest Butcher's Bill. And despite seemingly working on nothing but safe houses this entire time, the sole survivor has a lot of dialogue as if safe houses are new to him. Herkimer and Alan are kaput. Ticonderoga is kaput. Randolph was abandoned. Glory exchanged lead outside of Dayton, but so far Dayton is okay. That leaves Stanwix, Griswold, and our safe house Mercer as the only safe houses we know are still active, and so we head to the Augusta safe house to see whether the Institute has destroyed it as well. To find the location of the Augusta safe house, we have to find a dead drop. This dead drop is right outside the Super Duper Mart, and inside, we find the Augusta report. Augusta is still dark. Location enclosed. Exercise extreme caution. A nameless railroad agent gives us the location of the Augusta safe house. After winding through the ruins of Cambridge, we find that the Augusta safe house is in the ruins of Kendall Hospital. Heading inside, we don't see any railroad agents. We don't immediately see any signs of violence. This large entry room has a few boxes and a little bit of loot. We find a door in the southern wall locked with a novice locked terminal. After hacking it and opening the door, we see that the path is blocked. A shelf has fallen over and we can't get through this way. Instead, we can turn around and open a door to the southwest. Inside this room, we find a closed red door to the left and an open door directly in front of us. And through the door, we see raiders. Oh no! After taking this guy out, we see a huge fire in the middle of this atrium floor. There are bodies lying on the fire. Could those be railroad agents? Moving into the next room. Come on out! I'll make it nice and quick. The raiders have fully moved in. We find Buff Out and Jet near to this raider, but with this room explored, we can continue to explore the perimeter of this lower atrium level. We've been pretty stealthy so far. We'll see how long we can keep it up. A few more raiders begin to walk around, completely oblivious to the fact that we're here murdering them. What the fuck was that? I'll find you. I don't know. Jumping in shadows. Yeah, Got you're him. probably right. Gotta cut down on the jet, I guess. Someone's out there! Up! But stealth is ruined! Shoot him! Shoot him all! Here I was wanting to spend the day reading proofs, and then you had to ruin it! Just die! Another one bites the dust. Thanks to Dickens' help, these raiders have lost our scent, and we can continue to quietly and carefully explore this lower level. In the ruins of a pharmacy, we find an advanced locked floor safe with ammunition inside. Out of the pharmacy, we find a room to the right with a Protectron inside. The terminal isn't locked, so we can reprogram and activate this Protectron to let it roam around and fight for us. And just in time. 
more raiders come to see what's been going on. Your violation of penal code has been noted. As we let the Protectron deal with them, we find a pile of railroad agent bodies on a push cart. The Protectron stopped making noise, and we still find one raider alive so we can finish him off. With that, it looks like we've cleared this lower level. There's a book return terminal here, so if we have any overdue books, we could turn them in here. As we explore, we discover the wreckage of a synth. Which came first, the synth or the raiders? Perhaps the Institute arrived here first, killed all the railroad, and then the raiders came and mopped up the synths. We'll keep our eyes peeled for notes or terminal entries that'll tell us the full story. The bodies burning on the pile in the middle of the room can't be interacted with, so we don't know whose they are, but it's likely that they belong to railroad agents. With this bottom floor explored, we can take a staircase up to the second floor. Opening a door in the northern wall, we move through a number of ruined hospital rooms. We can loot the wreckage of the turret we destroyed from below, and continuing around, we find more raiders in a southern room. I'll find you! We made that look easy. After killing the raiders, we find an elevator. And just outside, a push cart with more railroad agents' bodies stuffed inside. Before exploring the elevator, we can move into this room. There's not much here but a barrel on fire and another destroyed synth. Heading out to a balcony, we can loot some jet, a wooden crate, some buff out, and that appears to be it. Our only path forward is to go back to the elevator and take it up to a top floor. We arrive on a platform next to a Nuka-Cola machine. Weaving through these hallways, we find a turret. There's a rubble ramp leading down to a lower platform and a room to the left. Ah, God, Deacon, sorry. You can't surprise me like that, buddy. Moving into this room, we can loot some ammunition and a desk and some caps on a makeshift table. Opening a door here, we can loot the machine gun turret that we destroyed. And this is a dead end, so we have to go downstairs. And it looks like we've entered what was the maternity wing of this hospital. We see cribs through a window to the right, but we can't get into that room yet. Instead, we have to pass through a broken wall to the south. This leads to a ruined hallway with an elevator shaft we can't access and a bathroom. The bathroom opens up into a kitchen, which is mostly empty, but this allows us to navigate through some broken walls to enter the maternity wing. Here we find another synth wreckage amongst the cribs. We find knives stabbed into a table next to a bloody handprint. More evidence of raiders hanging corpses stabbed with knives. The corpse of a railroad agent on the ground beneath it. Heads and body parts in a sink. Oh. Through this door, we arrive in a hallway next to blue double doors. There's some psycho on a makeshift barricade, and when ready, we can open the double doors. This puts us on a platform overlooking another large hospital atrium. We can try to be sneaky. No! We got fun time incoming. I'll find you! We almost got away. You know that? It's called fear! Son of a bitch! Ed, you hear me? Broken. Don't you die on me! Whew, we caused some confusion. They never quite knew where we were, but that rocket launcher really hurt. The raiders have really moved in and made this ruin their own. The floors of this level have been completely destroyed, but the raiders have erected platforms and walkways crisscrossing this way and that. Hugging this wall, we go down a ramp to enter one of these ruined rooms. 
There's an advanced locked blue door to the right. No way, I, I couldn't pick this, but if we could, it opens into a storage room with a hole in the wall that allows us to skip some of this section. I didn't want to go that way just yet. So turning east, we see that we can drop down to a floor below or we can navigate across this walkway. Before doing that, we can try hugging this wall where we find a small section with a stretcher and a weapon, but nothing else of interest. And so we can quietly and stealthily cross this walkway. And once there, loot the corpses of the raiders on the other side. From here, we see another raider. And we make quick work of him. From here, we see a staircase leading up. But before going up, we can loot some medics on a table on this level and some psycho in a closet. Then, after looting a bottle cap mine on a shelf and an ammo canister under the stairs, we can take the stairs to this upper level. There are more chems up here as well, and a huge shaft, which apparently they use to stuff bodies into cages and drop the cages to hang above the void below. Through a hole in the wall, we move down a hallway and turn a corner to arrive on another floor. Here we can loot a missile, a wooden crate, and a duffel bag, but there's nowhere else to go. So back to the last room, we can take a staircase down, loot more raiders, and here we find a staircase leading down to another platform to the north. But before heading down there, we see a cap stash hiding on the other side of a red barrel. And instead of taking the staircase down, we can hug this ledge to the left. If we're very careful, we can hop all the way around this ledge to arrive on a room on the opposite end. Here we find a wooden crate, a short syringer rifle leaning against a wall, some cap stash on a tray next to some pre-war money, and a supply room. This is the room on the other side of the advanced locked door that we unlocked earlier. So we've done a big loop. But we now know there's only one way forward. So back along the lip, we can take the staircase down to the next floor below. Weaving through this ruin, we find a room with a bed and a teacher's desk. Inside the desk is the Augusta Station last update holotape. Listening to it in our pit boy We are under attack. Repeat, we are under... My God. Listen, Augusta's not going to make it. They're going to be here any second. They knew exactly where we were. Tell... But from this holotape, we don't learn who was attacking them. Though I think we can deduce that it was the Institute. He said that they knew exactly where we were. This gives us the impression that it was the Institute who came here first and wiped them out, and it was Raiders who came later to finish off the synths and clean up the corpses. In this room is an overdue book and some jet on a bookshelf. We can use the book return terminal on the ground floor to return this overdue book once we finish exploring. Out onto a balcony, we can loot the dead. We see an advanced locked red door here, but before heading through it, we can peer through a window on the other side to see exactly what's in store for us. Lying on a table on the other side of this window is an office key. Hey, looting the office key, we can go back to the red door and open it without having to pick the lock. But before exploring this room, we can go back to the hallway and get rid of a turret. <sighs> get a grip on yourself. We saw movement on the other side of the office. Let's see if we can sneak up behind him. Instead of going into the office just yet, we can loot the wreckage of the turret and then go through a blue door into a ruined room that leads to a hallway where we find a raider with his back to us. Oh, but before we could kill him, he moved through a hole in the wall. Let's see if he comes back. Ooh, raider down. But almost immediately, another raider comes to take his spot. Thanks, if we just sit here, will they keep on coming? No? All right, then. With these raiders dead, we can now go into the office. This is the room we unlocked with the office key. We find a couple of beds here, an armor workbench, but very little loot. So heading out to the platform where we killed the two raiders, we can loot their bodies. And here we see a walkway leading down to the next level. Carefully creeping down this walkway, we arrive on a platform and can then take a staircase down to the second to last level. Here we find bottle caps and pre-war money on an overturned table, a wooden crate 
with ammunition and chems inside. And then the only way forward, aside from jumping down, is to move northwest. Here we find a little nook to the left with a chem box inside and two ammo crates on the ground. After looting a wooden crate on another crate, we can turn around and open a blue door into a bathroom. But there's nothing here. So with the bathroom explored, our only option at this point is to jump down. We don't find any more staircases or ramps leading to the level below, so we've got to jump down. But as soon as we do... A Deathclaw appears in an adjoining room. With Deacon tanking for us, we can pull out Deliverer and plunk away at him. That is. Well, that was effective, but it seemed a bit anticlimactic. So reloading a save, we can try to kill this Deathclaw again with a little bit more pizzazz. I discovered that by jumping down on top of this electrical box, we don't trigger the encounter just yet. And so we can use the opportunity to scatter a bunch of bottle cap mines around until the Deathclaw spawns. Then we can cut him around the mines. Go ahead, run. and then finish him off. So where did this guy come from? How long has this Deathclaw been in Kendall Hospital? Was he here the entire time and the railroad just didn't know that their safe house was built right on top of a Deathclaw nest? Or could the raiders have brought the Deathclaw here? Maybe as an egg that they hatched, intending to use him as corpse disposal. I suppose we won't really know. But on this lower level, we find the corpses of railroad agents, the bodies of raiders, more railroad agents in cages. With this bottom section explored, we can move through some broken concrete into the section where the death claw was. We see a security door with a big red button and a fusion generator against the wall. After looting the fusion core, we can try to press the button but uh, nothing happens. Looks like we need to divert power to the security door. Turning back around, we do find a circuit breaker on a southern wall. After flipping it, we restore power to the door. We can push the red button and open the security door. Through the door and sidestepping some toxic waste, we find a room to the right with an end of dungeon steamer trunk inside and a couple of filing cabinets. Out of the room and up some steps, we can open a door to Cambridge. We arrive in a small room and to leave, we actually have to remove these latches on a door, which brings us to an area that's infested with bugs. Kendall Hospital is a really interesting dungeon, but sadly we don't learn much about Kendall Hospital's pre-war story. But from the environmental storytelling we find here, I think we can deduce that the Institute found Augusta safe house, came through and attacked it. At some point shortly thereafter, or perhaps a while afterwards, raiders discovered the place, came inside, and began to turn it into a raider den. Heading back to the railroad, we can tell Dr. Carrington the sad news. Augusta safe house was destroyed by the Institute. It's as I feared. Three safe houses gone. Hard to imagine. I have nothing further for you at the moment. I'm sure someone else could use your help. No shortage of files to be put out. With that, we complete Butcher's Bill, and Carrington gives us 150 bottle caps. We can now cross Augusta off our list of safe houses. That leaves Griswold, Dayton, Stanwix, and Mercer. But how long will it be until the railroad discovers them as well? We'll find out more in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button.
If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually every time I publish a video. I've got an Ox plushie for sale. It's currently available for pre-order. I have a limited number in stock, so when it's gone, it's gone. Snag yours today before I completely run out. I've also got a merch shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos, and they get access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the full story of The Railroad. When running since out of the wealth, Wastelanders can be a bigger problem than even the Institute.